Welcome to the Gamers Encyclopedia, an informative series detailing the histories of long-running or important series in gaming history. First up, Metroid. Metroid was created by the late Gunpei Yokoi, who also created Kid Icarus and invented the Game & Watch, Game Boy, Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, and is the creator of the D-Pad designed for controllers. Metroid is a series of action games with a heavy focus on exploration in a science fiction setting, with the player controlling Samus Aran, a bounty hunter in a powered spacesuit. Samus is one of the first few female heroes in video game history, and in the original game her identity was kept a secret, and documentation referred to Samus as male, with the reveal of her gender being a twist at the end of the game. Metroid, along with the arcade title Bubble Bobble, was also among some of the very first games to have multiple endings. One interesting thing about the series in general is its demographic. Although it was created in Japan, the series has never been popular in Japan, but found its success mostly in the United States. Also, unlike other Nintendo-owned franchises, the release of Metroid games tends to be spaced apart by years, with only eight main titles in the series' 26-year history, and a few spin-offs. Despite this, the character of Samus Aran is well known, and has appeared as a playable character in all of the Super Smash Bros. games, as well as making cameos in many other Nintendo titles, such as Tetris, Super Mario RPG, Kirby's Dream Land 3, and Nintendo Land. And for a while, there was talk of a Metroid movie to be directed by John Woo, though this never happened. So let's take a look at the first Metroid game, simply titled Metroid. Here are the vital stats. Metroid was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and Intelligent Systems, and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Satoru Okada and Yoshio Sakamoto, and produced by Gunpei Yokoi. Metroid was released originally for the Famicom on August 6, 1986 in Japan, and on the NES in August of 1987 in America, January 15, 1988 in Europe, and parts of Asia throughout 1988. The game had been ported to the Game Boy Advance, the Wii Virtual Console, and the 3DS Virtual Console. The Game Boy Advance version came out on August 10, 2004 in Japan, August 25, 2004 in America, and January 7, 2005 in Europe. The Wii version came out July 20, 2007 in Europe, August 13, 2007 in America, and March 4, 2008 in Japan. The 3DS version came out February 29, 2012 in Japan, March 1st, 2012 in America, and March 15th, 2012 in Europe and Australia, although in all these regions, members of the 3DS Ambassador Program got the game early on September 1st, 2011. The current Metacritic score for Metroid is 61.54%. This is reviewing the Game Boy Advance version, and is the lowest scoring game in the series on Metacritic, mostly due to the fact that the original game had not aged well by the time the Game Boy Advance rolled around, and an enhanced remake was already available on the same system. The game puts you in the shoes of Samus Aran, who has arrived on the planet Zebes, looking to battle space pirates who have stolen specimens of a dangerous and valuable life form called Metroids. Samus has to navigate her way through an open world with a side-scrolling view. The game allows Samus to go anywhere, making the game non-linear, but many areas have to be accessed by Samus using specific abilities, such as missiles to open certain doors, a higher jump, bombs to destroy barriers, or a way to freeze enemies in place and use them as a platform. There are five areas to the game, Brinstar, Norfair, Kraid's Lair, Ridley's Lair, and Turian. Players must explore and get as many upgrades for Samus as they can, as well as discovering the lairs of Kraid and Ridley, and defeating them to gain access to Turian, where Samus battles against the game's final boss, the Mother Brain. She also must destroy as many Metroids as possible and plant a bomb after defeating Mother Brain and escape before it explodes, destroying most of Torian and damaging the rest of the planet. Metroid is exceptionally long for an early NES game. Most games at the time were either designed to be completed in a single setting or were arcade-style games that had no ending. Metroid used passwords to save the game and is among the first games to use this system. One famous password, perhaps the most famous video game password ever, is the Justin Bailey code. Inputting the first line of the password as the name Justin Bailey, and the second line as all dashes or zeros would put Samus in an advanced part of the game, but without her power suit. 
Since the sprites for Samus running around without her power suit are not found in the game otherwise, this was very clearly programmed in. But the question became, who or what is Justin Bailey? No one with this name has ever come forward, nor has Nintendo ever indicated who Justin Bailey is or was. One popular theory is that it's not Justin as in the name, but just in, with Bailey being Australian slang for a swimsuit, which is what Samus is wearing. This theory, however, like all others, is unproven. Nintendo claims the Justin Bailey code is meaningless and a mere coincidence. But what's interesting is that the password fails the checksum for valid Metroid passwords. So it had to have been put in there specifically by a programmer. Maybe one day this mystery will be solved, but for now, all we have is theories and misinformation. Metroid was not a success in Japan, but it did well in America, and its creator Gunpei Yokoi would do a sequel a few years later for his own creation, the Game Boy, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. So here are the vital stats for Metroid 2. Metroid 2 Return of Samus was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Hiroji Kiyotake and Hiroyuko Kimura and produced by Gunpei Yokoi. The game was released on Game Boy in November of 1991 in America, January of 1992 in Japan, and May of 1992 in Europe, making the, marking the first time that a game in the series would be released in America first. It was later ported to the 3DS Virtual Console. The 3DS version came out on September 19, 2011 in Japan, and November 24, 2011 in America and Europe. The current Metacritic score applying to the original Game Boy release is 78 the second lowest of the series. Metroid 2 has some advantages over the original, such as better graphics, despite the lack of color, and more abilities for Samus, who both starts with more abilities than the original game, and can also find more upgrades. The game is also less confusing, with more variation of areas, and it has more music than the original. However, the game also suffers from a few setbacks. Samus' sprite is very large and takes up most of the screen, giving you less room to see what's coming, and the game is more linear. Although it rewards exploration, it is no longer truly an open-world game, and Samus must explore one area at a time. In this game, Samus has arrived on the planet SR-388, the Metroid's homeworld. She's looking to eliminate these dangerous buggers. Samus starts with a Metroid detector, which tells her how many Metroids are in her general area. Whenever she defeats all the Metroids in an area, a convenient earthquake causes the planet's poisonous gas to shift, allowing her access to the next area. The goal is to get down to the nest where the Metroids are hatched and take out the queen. The game was more complex than the original, and passwords were starting to go out of style in favor of battery saves more and more. So Metroid 2 got rid of the passwords in favor of standard saves. Once again, the game was more of a hit in America than Japan, and it was marketed extremely heavily in the United States in anticipation of its success. My personal experience with the game rendered it as more of an obsession than a hobby. I must have played through it about a dozen times or so, either to get a better ending or just to play through it again. Thankfully, there wouldn't be another five-year wait for another game, as Super Metroid would arrive a mere three years later. Also, occasionally referred to by fans at the time as Metroid 3, which it also says in the title crawl, Super Metroid took the series to new heights, returning to a major home console. Here are the game's vital stats. Super Metroid was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto and produced by Makoto Kano, with series creator Gunpei Yokoi staying on as manager. The game was released for the Super NES on March 19th of 1994 in Japan, April 18th of 1994 in America, and July 28th, 1994 in Europe. It has been ported to the Wii Virtual Console and the Wii U Virtual Console. The Wii version came out on August 20th, 2007 in America, September 20th, 2007 in Japan, October 12th, 2007 in Europe, and April 26, 2008 in South Korea. The Wii U version saw a worldwide release on May 15, 2013. The current Metacritic score applying to the original Super NES release is 95.5%, the second highest of the series. Super Metroid in a lot of ways is an enhancement of the original. Samus is once again on the planet Zebes and is once again hunting the space pirates Ridley and Kraid, as well as others. This time around, the baby Metroid that Samus adopted at the end of the last game is captured by Ridley and taken to Zebes and Samus is in pursuit. Norfair, Brinstar, and Torian return, along with new areas such as Meridia and the crashed ship. 
Samus has a lot more abilities, and for the first time, the player has the ability to manage Samus' abilities by going into a subscreen and toggling them. You can even mix and match beams. For example, it's no longer a choice between the ice beam and the wave beam, but having both gives you an icy wave beam. Or is that a wavy ice beam? Well, whatever, it rules. There's also a number of new abilities Samus has that can be done with certain button presses in conjunction with certain abilities, some of which are well-kept secrets by the game that you must discover on your own, and some of which are demonstrated to you by the game. Super Metroid was one of the best-received Super NES games and was praised for its mixture of excellent gameplay, attractive graphics, and a stellar soundtrack, as well as the addition of an in-game map that helped with exploration, which was once again open-world. As a matter of fact, the map system from Super Metroid was so influential it has been adopted in series such as Castlevania, which ran with the Metroid formula after releasing Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation. To this day, this style of gameplay is known as Metroidvania, or alternatively, Castle Troid, though I hear that one far less. It's not often that a game is so influential for a genre or a style to be named after it, and Castlevania and Metroid share this honor, but it was Super Metroid that came first. Despite the fact that Super Metroid was a success, even doing well in Japan, it would be the last game for quite a while. It would be eight years before the series would return. The reasons behind this are many, but the primary reason would be the departure and subsequent passing of series creator Gunpei Yokoi. After the Game & Watch and the Game Boy, Nintendo expected another big hit from Yokoi in terms of handheld video game hardware. But what he came up with was the Virtual Boy, a critical and commercial failure. The disgraced Yokoi resigned from Nintendo and went to work for Bandai, where he created the Wonder Swan handheld. Yokoi was then later tragically killed in a car accident. The fact that they didn't have Yokoi driving the series, coupled with the lack of confidence in the series in Japan, led to the series going on hiatus for a while. However, it was eventually announced that there would not only be a new Metroid game, but two new games were coming, both to be released at the same time. One was originally given the title Metroid 4, and was announced as a sequel to Super Metroid that would hit the Game Boy Advance. The second, entitled Metroid Prime, would be for the GameCube. And here's where things got really interesting. It would be an interquel that would take place between Metroid and Metroid 2, and it would be a first-person action game to be developed by Retro Studios, an American company. This led to a huge wave of skepticism on the internet, with accusations of turning Metroid into a first-person shooter reminiscent of Half-Life, and the practice of a Japanese company farming out a long-running and well-respected legacy series to a brand new, unproven Western developer who hadn't even yet finished any games of their own was found to be highly questionable. Well, we know how it turned out, and handing over series to other developers became something Nintendo would wind up doing with some of their other franchises as well. Both games debuted at the same time, but let's look at Metroid Fusion first. Here are its vital stats. Metroid Fusion was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto and produced by Takahiro Izushi. The game was released for the Game Boy Advance on November 17, 2002 in America, November 22, 2002 in Europe, November 29, 2002 in Australia, and February 14, 2003 in Japan. It was later ported to the 3DS Virtual Console, however, it is currently only available to members of the Ambassador Program as of December 16, 2011, and it hasn't yet been released to the general public. On Metacritic, it currently holds a score of 91.44%, the fifth highest of the series. Metroid Fusion was received really well, and although it was overshadowed by Metroid Prime, especially due to the simultaneous release, skeptics of the first-person 3D approach were glad to have another new side-scrolling game. Metroid Fusion does depart a bit, however, as Samus is severely weakened from previous games, and in the first half of the game can be killed very easily, leading to a more stealthy and slower-paced approach from players. And the dark atmosphere gives it an almost survival horror feel, though it's still very much an action game. Samus is exploring a space station, which is being overrun by an infection of parasites called the X, and it turns out the X were what destroyed the Chozo civilization, the ancient bird-like race that raised Samus. The Metroids were created by the Chozo to combat the X, and as Samus is now part Metroid herself, she is naturally equipped to battle them. There is one particular X called the SAX, which copied Samus at the height of her powers, and as she's now severely weakened, the SAX has to be avoided at all costs for much of the game. 
The game is also much more story-based than previous games, with regular interaction between Samus and a computer AI, which she names Adam, as well as narration from Samus. Although the game is praised for all these things, as well as the excellent gameplay, graphics, and music, some found it to be more linear than Super Metroid due to the computer locking down the station and only allowing Samus access to areas as needed, so as to avoid the X-Parasite's access to more parts of the station. Gamers who missed the open-world exploration of the series would get their fill with Metroid Prime, so let's talk about that one. Here are the vital stats. Metroid Prime was developed by Retro Studios and Nintendo, and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Mark Piccini and produced by Michael Mann, Shigeru Miyamoto, Kenji Miki, Kensuke Tanabe, and Akiri Otami. It was released on the GameCube on November 17, 2002 in America, February 28, 2003 in Japan, March 21, 2003 in Europe, and April 23, 2003 in Australia. It was later ported to the Wii with a new control scheme under the title New Play Control Metroid Prime in Japan on February 19, 2009. The rest of the world would get it as part of Metroid Prime Trilogy for the Wii, which was released on August 29, 2009 in America, September 4, 2009 in Europe, and October 15, 2009 in Australia. The current Metacritic score for Metroid Prime is 96.35%, the highest in the series. And yes, as you can tell, despite the qualms many people had about the jump to 3D, the first-person view, and the untested American developer, people were blown away by Metroid Prime, which felt less like a first-person shooter and more like, well, like a Metroid game, just in first person. The game takes place shortly after the original Metroid. Samus is exploring the planet Talon 4. After receiving a distress call from a space station, Samus first heads there, but then she runs into Ridley, who flees to Talon 4 and Samus pursues him, discovering a lot along the way about the nature of the space pirates, the lore of the planet, and the origins of the Metroids and the Chozo race. The game featured pretty much everything you'd expect from a Metroid title, just with a differing perspective. It even gives a 3D version of the familiar map. Seeing the inside of Samus's visor also gives a new heads-up display, which also lets Samus use differing filters to see things differently, such as a scanning visor or tracking heat signatures. The graphics were some of the best on the GameCube to date, and the game's exploration and action were top-notch. Metroid Prime turned the corner for the series. Instead of being a well-respected but somewhat neglected series, it was now a huge hit from Nintendo both in America and Japan, and the amount of releases from the series would spike upwards sharply, and the series would largely de be developed by Retro Studios for some time. However, next up, Nintendo had one more internally developed Metroid game in them, and it came in the way of Metroid Zero Mission, an enhanced remake of the original game, allowing new fans to the series to experience the first story, only without having to play the aged NES classic. Here's the vital stats. Metroid Zero Mission was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto and produced by Takahiro Izushi. The game was released for the Game Boy Advance on February 9, 2004 in America, March 19, 2004 in Australia, April 9, 2004 in Europe, and May 27, 2004 in Japan. The current Metacritic score is 89.89%, the seventh highest of the series. Metroid Zero Mission basically takes the original game and gives it a makeover to play more like a cross between Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. The game is not as linear as Fusion, it's still open world, but it also gives the player far more direction than the original, which by today's standards was one of those where do I go now types of games. Zero Mission also features an expended epilogue after defeating the Mother Brain, where Samus' ship is shot down by the space pirates after trying to leave the planet, and she finds herself in the sp space pirate base without her power suit, having to find her way through using mostly stealth. The skin-tight blue suit that Samus wears in this section became known as the Zero Suit, and the version of Samus would even appear as an alternative way of playing as her in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Next up would be a direct sequel to Metroid Prime, essentially making it another interquel between Metroid Prime and Metroid 2, this time titled Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Here's the vital stats. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes was developed by Retro Studios and Nintendo and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Mark Pacini and produced by Brian Walker, Kenji Miki, and Kensuke Tanabe. It was released for the GameCube on November 15, 2004 in America, November 26, 2004 in Europe, December 2, 2004 in Australia, 
and May 26, 2005 in Japan. It was later ported to the Wii, much like the last one, as New Play Control Metroid Prime 2 Echoes in Japan on June 11, 2009. The rest of the world got it as part of the Metroid Prime Trilogy, which I had previously mentioned and given release dates for. The current Metacritic score for Echoes is 92.05%, the fourth highest of the series. Echoes has Samus travel to the mysterious planet Ether, which has been broken into two dimensions, Light Ether and Dark Ether, and Samus has to travel between these two parallel worlds as it goes on. What's more, Samus herself has split into two and is being dogged by the dark version of herself, much like the SAX dogged her in Fusion, or will eventually since that one takes place way later in the series' timeline. The main enemies this time around are a race of parasitic giant insects known as the Ing. Metroid Prime 2 is a lot like the first one, only with some new upgrades and different beams and such, and for the first time Samus had a gun which used ammunition. The light beam, dark beam, and annihilator beam required certain types of energy to fire that Samus must find, though the light and dark beams could be fired with no ammo, just at a greatly reduced fire rate. The game is also a lot more difficult than its predecessor, mostly due to the dark world being poisonous to Samus, and the player has to stick to safe zones for a huge part of the game, and some of the bosses can just be infuriating. If you're watching this, and you've played through Echoes, I only have to say two words to put you into a huge rage fit. Boost Guardian. Echoes received criticism for these elements, as well as the first area of the game being rather dull-looking and gloomy. The awesome-looking parts would happen later, but generally, it's considered to be a great game, just not as good as the first one, and I have to agree with this. Now, the Metroid series had not really been popular enough in the past to get spin-offs, in the way that Nintendo franchises do. I mean, just look at the sheer volume of Mario spin-offs, after all. But next up would be a spin-off for the game, and it's... well, it's pretty stupid. Yes, I'm talking about Metroid Prime Pinball. Yeah, here's the vital stats. Metroid Prime Pinball was developed by Fuse Games, now known as Silver Bowl Studios, and it was published by Nintendo. The game did not have a director, and was published by Kensuke Tanabe. It was released for the DS on October 24, 2005 in America, December 1, 2005 in Australia, January 19, 2006 in Japan, and June 22, 2007 in Europe. The current Metacritic score for the game is 80.22%, the ninth overall in the series. Well, I haven't played this one, so I can't really give much personal insight, but even though it sounds fucktarded at best, it does sort of have a sense to it after all. Samus rolls into a ball. Fuse Games had previously made Mario Pinball land on the Game Boy Advance, and have since made a few other pinball games. But Metroid Prime Pinball was their last Nintendo license. Story-wise, it's not part of the Metroid canon, but it basically retells the events of Metroid Prime as a pinball game. Yeah. Next up is the other spin-off of the series, also for the DS and also ostensibly part of the Prime series. This would be Metroid Prime Hunters. Here's the vital stats. Metroid Prime Hunters was developed by Nintendo Software Technology and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Masamichi Abe and produced by Kensuke Tanabe, Shigeki Yashashiro, and Robert Champagne. It was released for the DS on March 20th, 2006 in America, March 21st, 2006 in Canada, May 5th, 2006 in Europe, May 25th, 2006 in Australia, and June 1st, 2006 in Japan. The game's current Metacritic score is 83.95%, the 8th overall in the series. Hunters is another one that I haven't personally played, though I did try out the demo. This one heavily uses the DS touchpad for aiming and exploration, and was an early showcase of DS technology, though the game got delayed several times before release. Samus is in the Alimbic solar system, exploring planets and space stations looking for an ultimate power that supposedly resides there. There are several other bounty hunter characters that are also looking for it, which are Samus's rivals, and also other players to play as in the game's multiplayer mode, and whom Samus must eventually get out of a jam at the end during the last boss battle. In terms of the story, it takes place between Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. The next game in the series would be the last one from Retro, closing out the Prime series, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. This one I remember feeling it was sort of unfortunate, as the Prime series would not close out on the GameCube, but the last part would be for the Wii. 
Though, now the entire trilogy is available for the Wii, I remember feeling pretty annoyed about it at the time. Here's the vital stats. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption was developed by Retro Studios and Nintendo, and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Mark Piccini and produced by Kensuke Tanabe. It was released for the Wii on August 27, 2008 in America, August 26, 2008 in Europe, November 8, 2007 in Australia, and March 6, 2008 in Japan. It was re-released as part of the previously mentioned trilogy bundle. The current Metacritic score for the game is 90.23%, the sixth overall for the series. As the game was now on the Wii, it was not only allowed for better graphics, but also differing gameplay using the Wii's motion controls. You can now aim Samus's gun with the Wii mode as a pointer and just move around using the nunchucks on analog stick. It's actually surprisingly intuitive, and once you get used to it, it's one of the best control schemes for a first-person game, other than having a keyboard and mouse, of course. This co closes out the trilogy, and it has Samus exploring several planets and also coming face-to-face -face once again with the Metroid Prime, this time corrupted heavily by the Phazon energy. Corruption, in my opinion, was the best of the trilogy, though judging from Metacritic, some people felt otherwise. Oh well. I think this was a reaction to the motion controls. It's sort of a shame that so many gamers think motion controls means waving shit around like an idiot, and they miss out on great games like this which integrate the movements in a way that makes sense and feels natural. I suppose that's just how people are. Fuck them. Anyway, Corruption would see the departure of Retro Studios from the series, though their relationship with Nintendo would continue, essentially becoming one of the biggest and best second-party developers, making Donkey Kong Country Returns and Mario Kart 7, and with a new, currently untitled project on the way for the Wii U. One last thing to mention, Metroid Prime Trilogy. While the first two Metroid Prime games were ported to the Wii in Japan separately, all the other regions got the bundle. I already mentioned the release dates and whatnot, but I wanted to mention it here as it has its own Metacritic score of 92.35%, the third highest in the series. Now, Nintendo had such success with farming out their series to companies like Retro Studios, Rare, Namco, and Sega, that they decided to try again with Metroid, this time giving it over to Team Ninja, the creators of the Dead or Alive series. Yeah, and we're wondering how that went wrong? This game, Metroid Other M, was unveiled at Nintendo's 2009 E3 conference, and was pretty much the only good part of that particular conference. Though with how the game turned out, maybe it was a total loss. Anyway, here's the vital stats. Metroid Other M was developed by Team Ninja, Nintendo, and D-Rockets, and published by Nintendo. It was directed by Yoshio Sakamoto, Yosuke Hayashi, and Takehiko Hukosawa. And it was produced by Yoshio Sakamoto and Yosuke Hayashi. It was released for the Wii on August 31st, 2010 in America, September 2nd, 2010 in Japan and Australia, and September 3rd, 2010 in Europe. The current Metacritic score for the game is 78.55%, the 10th overall. Other M would eschew the first-person view of the Prime series and give us a 3D third-person action-adventure game in which players control Samus using the Wii mode held on its side, and then pointed at the screen to go into first-person, However, this did lock Samus into place. There were numerous gameplay elements that people, including myself, found annoying, such as having to go into first person to find things, but then not being able to move freely in this mode, and this being the only way to fire missiles. I also felt the graphics were a huge letdown after how good corruption looked, and the storyline, which gave Samus a lot of dialogue, definitely changed her character in the minds of most people, from a confident badass into more of a wimpy chick who is easily cowed by authority. One element that annoys many people is that for the first time, Samus has all of her abilities from the get-go. But Adam Malkovich, her former commanding officer, and the one she named the computer after in Metroid Fusion, would arbitrarily forbid her from using abilities unless he gave her the go-ahead. And Samus, despite not being in the military and being an independently hired bounty hunter, would adhere to this because, you know, a man told her to. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Anyway, enough bitching. Is Other M a bad game? No, not really, but it's a bad Metroid game. In my opinion, easily it's the low point of the series. Story-wise, it takes place after Super Metroid and before Metroid Fusion, making it yet another interquel, which also irked fans who were looking for the story to continue past the point of fusion. 
Unfortunately, other M's lukewarm reception and lower sales led to the series going into hibernation once again, with no news of any Metroid projects on the way. For a while, it looked as if Samus would appear as a guest fighter in Team Ninja's own Dead or Alive dimensions for the DS, but instead she basically just made a cameo. There's also Metroid Dread, a rumored project from Retro Studios that was supposedly a classic side-scrolling style game for the DS. Though there were references to it found in the Prime games, Retro and Nintendo were tight-lipped about its existence, and if it was ever really being developed, it was quietly cancelled. So, a sad ending to the Metroid series, but it's quite possible that it may once again return. Perhaps Nintendo would care again to internally develop another game for the series, or perhaps someone else may want to take a crack at it. Or hell, maybe the mystery project that Rare is working on for the Wii U, maybe that's a Metroid game. It is, after all, a possibility. But for now, that's it for the series, and for this first episode of the Gamers Encyclopedia. See you next week, and we'll take a look at one of the oldest and most influential series of Japanese RPGs out there.